everybody. Uh, my name is Radhika and I'm a faculty at Parul Institute of Law, Parul University. I, uh, on behalf of my institution, I welcome all of you for what we have gathered today and what I believe is a very, very important um, agenda to discuss academically, that is contemporary challenges in international humanitarian law. And for delivering an expert uh, lecture on the same, we have today with us Professor Bharat Desai. Uh, and I will um, quickly introduce sir, although sir does not require any introduction, but uh, still. So uh, Professor Bharat, uh, Professor Dr. Bharat Desai is a professor of international law at Jawaharlal Nehru University. He's also the Jawaharlal Nehru Chair in International Environmental Law and Chairman of Center for International Legal Studies at School of International Studies, JNU, New Delhi. Now, uh, Sir has many accomplishments and publications to his name. However, I will name some of the most recent ones and the most um, uh, important ones. Sir uh, has published widely with Oxford University Press. His uh, significant scholarly books include International Environment Court, a Legal Study of an Ideal, uh, published with Brill Nijhoff in a uh, very current year right now. and. Uh, and is a forthcoming book. He has published in international uh, some. Uh, he has published uh, under the uh, title of International Environmental Governance towards uh, UNEPO again with the same publisher. And sir has also published about multilateral environment agreements, legal status of the secretariats published with Cambridge University Press in the year 2010. Now, sir has mooted various proposals of global significance at the United Nations um, Environment Protection Organization, as well as for something as relevant as revival of the UN trusteeship, uh, trusteeship Council with a new mandate for environment and the global commons at legal department of World, ba uh, World Bank. And uh, he has also he also is currently serving as the editor in chief of the yearbook of international environmental law, uh, which is also published by the Oxford University Press. And he's a managing managing editor of environmental policy and law published with iOS Press. Sir, I uh, welcome you. And before I hand uh, the floor over to you for your discussion, I would uh, request our Dean and Director, Professor Dr. Akil Sayed, for extending his warm welcome. So kindly unmute yourself. Thank you, Radhika. Uh, thank you not only for uh, giving me an opportunity to welcome Professor Bharat Desai, sir, but also for inviting such a distinguished personality at our uh, uh, institute. So. Uh, I had an interaction with uh, Professor Bharat Desai, sir, uh, through mail and phone call. And uh, uh, actually, I am very much fascinated with his personality and his whole of the profile. And uh, particularly when he is going to talk about uh, the recent challenges on the international humanitarian law, I think uh, uh, Radhika has made a best choice. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, Professor Bharat Desai would have made a best, cho best choice while uh, choosing Radhika as a PhD scholar. So now I think uh, uh, Guru Dakshina uh, uh, is getting uh, been offered. So uh, uh, Professor Desai, I welcome on my personal behalf, on behalf of Parul University and the Institute of Law. Uh, I uh, personally welcome you on this platform and I will not take much time. Uh, we all are eager to listen to you on uh, this, your expert topic. Thank you. Thank you, Akhil, sir. Uh, and uh, Professor Desai, now uh, I'm giving it over to you. Please, sir. OK, thank you. Thank you, Radhika. Huh? Thank you uh, for, for this uh, more than a generous uh, introduction. And uh, thank you, Akhil, for this uh, invitation. You know, uh, 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 you know, I think it's very, uh, very, very curious in the sense that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, invited to deliver a talk in one of the universities located in my my own home state in a in a city called Vadodara. Earlier it was called Baroda. I had never been to the city. Can you can you just imagine? You know, although a uh, lot of tossing was being done, you know, for vice chancellorship of uh, MSUC Baroda, you know, and uh, which uh, you know the probably the nature was dead against my 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 coming there. So it had to be you know literally 
uh, you know turned down you know and uh, so that still you know uh, but but well never had the time to enter the uh, city you know uh, in all these uh, years but i'm very happy uh, you know for uh, first uh, i would say the uh, uh, this online lecture being delivered uh, there are many other uh, uh, legendary people uh, you know in uh, the knowledge architecture of india very uh, very legendary universities but uh, you know they are all great and uh, i would say less said the better so i'm very happy and uh, i'm really uh, uh, very happy uh, that the you know parul university uh, you know institute of law has made its own mark so far the legal field discussion is all the more better for us that uh, you know radhika who uh, just submitted her phd you know uh, you know uh, just few months ago has uh, you know joined as a as a faculty member and i'm very happy akin that you are really holding the fort and uh, you know uh, uh, trying to make the mark ultimately at the end of the day you know the proof of the pudding is the eating irrespective of the nomenclature and big show baji and uh, you know uh, all these things is whether there is a government private whatever you know uh, like you know they say law of thought maxim says you know the you know recipes are located the thing will speak for itself that is what uh, i am sure you know the the parole can you know prove its metal now the 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 topic which uh, which uh, which uh, has been given to me you know uh, i do not claim to be an expert i happen to be a, a teacher uh, of international law and uh, well this is one of the uh, important areas which uh, you know uh, in, in the in the course of my my career i have been uh, uh, dealing with you know it's both as a as a as a you know as a teacher as somebody who has uh, published a uh, lot of things and also to be you know privy to uh, something which is happening you know at the uh, that uh, that level you know of uh, i would say uh, the 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 humanitarian i would say the flagship you know uh, which is the uh, you know uh, the international committee of the red cross you know which uh, which is the uh, you know agency which uh, which is the custodian of this entire corpus of uh, imposing corpus of this uh, you know uh, international community you know, and then you know uh, uh, having known the don known the known the head of the icrc it's again a very very peep into and uh, the level at which some of the issues which are uh, happening and they really feel and they acknowledge uh, uh, some of those uh, guidelines and other things uh, which are being uh, being uh, you know uh, dealt with but it's at a different different level it's not uh, you know jod tod or you know kind of thing you know that uh, you know give and take and you take and uh, i will do like that i, I never uh, have done that they said completely in a different real you know and i'll just try to put a finger on some of those important issues so for the time being you know uh, since it's a, it's like a ocean i i won't be won't have the time or the space you know to to go into great depth of this entire subject because the uh, there are plenty of those instruments uh, which are there although there is also uh, uh, that body of law which is called the customary customary law you know customary principles of international law and which is which has been there basically large number of those instruments which have come to be adapted and they say like the humanitarian law is also you know as 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 old as you know the history of warfare you know uh, on on planet earth itself you know so it's very important and it's one of the most uh, i would say very uh, uh, painful predicament you know uh, 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 you know of, of of human kind you know that uh, something you 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 are literally you know dealing with that uh, kind of thing which is uh, still not withstanding that entire corpus of the uh, legal framework you know the still the warfare is taking place still the violence taking place and plenty of you know kind of a uh, 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 those issues with the international humanitarian law is trying to grapple with and then principal nodal agency the international committee of the red cross which has a presence almost in every part of the world for them also it's very difficult to try to try to handle the the kind of the deeply embedded you know violence uh, you know in the in the in the human mind you know for instance you know. so for the for the two days purpose i thought i'll i have called out three 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 areas out of the large corpus of those issues and which i will call as a uh, you know soft belly soft belly of uh, you know international uh, humanitarian law and that covers uh, three areas one is of course the natural environment on which the international committee of the red cross look at the significance you know international committee of the red cross has come out with uh, special guidelines you know in 2020 just 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 uh, last uh, last uh, november and i had the 
you know privilege of uh, being invited to especially to to contribute to these uh, these uh, guidelines the making of guidelines and providing a, uh, that that commentary on 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 the guidelines is a very very the, the guidelines are 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 uh, available available you know and uh, also i had the you know uh, you know pleasure to invite the president of the international committee of the red cross peter morer to to write a special uh, uh, article for me you know which is now uh, which has just been published you know in uh, environmental policy and law and uh, to have uh, uh, you know uh, face to face uh, you know discussion you know video video discussion with him on many of those uh, things where he is you know icrc is actually uh, dabbling you know i think so it's a something which is uh, almost uh, happening area you know second area is of course the cultural heritage you know the destruction of the cultural heritage which is again a very very uh, very uh, one of the soft bellies of and there is a imposing corpus of those instruments you know dealing with the cultural heritage issues you know. and third is again a very very painful uh, aspect of warfare which is called uh, called sexual and gender based violence you know in armed conflicts you know which is all called you know mass rapes taking place you know mass uh, that kind of violence women as one of the uh, you know uh, 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 victims you know because they say they become the a woman's bodies become the battlefield so far as the warfare is concerned i'll just try to try to a uh, little see you know uh, mention as to how uh, this is happening how these issues three, all these these issues are of of a, of a, of a global uh, concern i thought i'll uh, share some of the powerpoint because many of the people may or may not have the uh, uh, you know background uh, uh, in the field and i thought there are of course uh, i will i will not touch much upon the text but i'll try to uh, uh explain some of the pictures which i have put so the pictures maybe maybe may may speak uh, you know uh, you know you know uh, better you know let me try to share the screen you know mm. can you can you see the screen radhika yes sir yes okay now uh, uh, as i as i already mentioned you know uh, uh, like uh, in, in one of the full course which i normally teach in in the winter semester in our uh, you know a phd program now it's a phd program mphil is uh, dead and gone you know earlier it was mphil program where uh, you know legal controls of international conflicts you know uh, that you know warfare has always been regarded as you know there is, it was there was nothing you know it was neither legal nor illegal it was something extra legal wars and conflicts have always been taking place you know rather i would say that well warfare you know the very element of war you know uh, uh, what is called a very very primitive instinct you know like they say uh, if you if you if you if you look at the the the, the preamble to the charter uh, preamble to the constitution of unesco it says the seeds of warfare lie in the minds of men because this i'm talking about the this uh, you know uh, uh, probably they, they were not very gender gender sensitive when the when the constitution of unesco was drafted so they had to use the uh, word men but uh, uh, now it has to be you know a different word that means uh, uh, and also the 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 the, the preamble to the, the charter of united nations which says that the war is a score you know it has been described as a war is a score which it says twice in our lifetime has played havoc you know so far as the you know planet is concerned you know and whenever the warfare takes place you know it's not everyone suffers you know they say war has not never been although it becomes a part of a mechanism is kind of a bravado kind of a to showcase you know a lot of people they go to war for for a lot of purpose you know you know some some people could could have a, the penchant to you know showcase and show off you know kind of a thing you know and plenty of i think i will not again go into many of those you know ashwamedhi yagna and you know uh, right from you know ramayana period to other period when this was this has always been a you know penchant you know you know to become you know vishwa vijayi you know to become and then you you have to fight you you have to you know you will you will push your way through the things you know or right they say right up to the time you know when alexander came you know i will not now use the word great you know, because some someone says there was nothing great about alexander you know you know, uh, you know uh, and he died too young at 33 and he also you know was you know had embarked upon you know uh, and plenty of massacres you carry out you we we had in our own own uh, own uh, uh, you know uh, country the, the the famous battle of kalinga which uh, after the plenty of bloodshed you know let the, the then uh, emperor you know, ashok to renounce the world for instance you know 
so war has been always been regarded as a something called call 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 evil you know an evil which you, which generally you know you have been trying your best to avoid you know you know as as a as a as a evil which is a, which is something which which does not go away so easily and it's, they say well it's there in the human mind you know it's very very banal it's very 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 obvious you know and so your perennial struggle you know has been how to banish warfare you know how to banish that human instinct to re have recourse to war and war has been taking place for variety of reasons notwithstanding the, the entire effort to regulate it. so the question is if the warfare if the conflicts are are so inevitable you know i will not have the time to go into the entire architecture of the or the blueprint for uh, you know a prohibition of threat or use of force under the charter of united nations you know uh, which 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 talks about you know the entire architecture which is they say the threat or use of force has been prohibited you know but it also provide makes a provision or allows concession to the sovereign states to resort to uh, right of self defense under article 51 you know so in principle because this had to be allowed you know because the for survival of the survival of the sovereign state you had to give that concession to to them also but notwithstanding that architecture you know where war was supposed to have been banished you know you know because having seen that you know as i said the preamble itself says you know war is a scourge you know which has afflicted the human kind you know they have seen there are i you know numerous kinds of accounts and and statistics available they say since the charter of united nations have come you know hundreds of wars have taken place you now you know which have killed millions of people notwithstanding the the advent of the of advent of the united nations the very architecture that entire thing you know and they say the wars have been still been raging in different parts of the world legal illegal those things you know and now we have entered a new area you know where you have a exercise very kind of a legitimate right you know to do certain things though you know I, i will not have the time to go into the era of that you know the surgical strikes the the precision laser guided precision guided munitions the new technology and other things so they are also posing new threat challenge to the entire architecture of the international humanitarian law so the very purpose of the international humanitarian law is uh, uh that well if if warfare is is in you know unavoidable you know then how how best you try to humanize the warfare for instance you know that if war cannot be cannot be cannot be cannot be you know you know uh, uh, banished at least you make an effort you know uh, uh, you know to 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 ensure that the warfare is is made as human as a possible and this is also a contradiction in terms you know can a war be humanized can you can you can you fight civilly in a, in a civil manner you know it's a, it's a contradiction you know you know because you fight like best you know you fight like animals fight for instance you know and often they say in the in the battlefield you know you have seen you know the the entire epics ramayana and mahabharat which have shown you know that well you know and always the you know we have had this entire predicament of of just wars and unjust wars right versus wrong good versus bad you know uh, right versus evil you know the the victory of right you know you know good evil that predicament and that uh you know about mahabharat you know where they say something which was uh, very inevitable you know that what is what is permissible and what is not permissible and that predicament has always been developed the human mind you know from generation to generation civilizations different civilizations have tried to cover different religions have tried to try to address this uh, kind of a, a, a predicament so effort have always been when you when you cursory have a look at you know Uh, you know the 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 you know like uh, epic ramayana and more so you know compared to ramayana you know it's basically mahabharat which is all about the uh, warfare you know uh, you know which uh, which where do's and don'ts so what is permissible what is not permissible you know who are the people in the category of people who are who could be could could possess that that uh, the shield of protection you know who are not subjected to subjected to any kind of a harm you know those who are probably called the combatants So once you are out, like you know, I will just—I don't have the picture. I would have uh, shown that picture, you know, that on the battle of Mah, you know, uh, Mahabharat, you know, where battlefield, you know, where you know, uh, you know, Karna, you know, when there is almost one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, fight between Arjun and 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 Karna, you know, he's he's you know, one of the one of the wheels of his chariot, you know, sinks in the ground. Probably they say he had a he had a curse, you know, and uh, then uh, then 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 uh, when Arjun is about to, you know. you know you know 
uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, target him, you know, then Colonel warns him saying that, well, you know, I'm, I'm just getting down from my chariot. I'm, I'm, I'm not using my weapon. And so please hold, hold fire till I, till I, I, I bring my chariot up, you know, and then the, then the main, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, main Sutradhar, you know, the main architect of the, you know, the, who, who actually, you know, could be held to be, he was actually held to be responsible, you know, Krishna, Lord Krishna, you know, himself with the admonishes, you know, as you saying, then what are you waiting for? What are you looking for? Just, you know, don't now bother about that uh, part because he, he the, the person he himself has been instrumental in doing plenty of those. Some, so you're trying to justify saying that, well, Karna had already done plenty of those things. So here there is no ground or justification whatsoever to spare him. And that is exactly what uh, Arjun ends up uh, doing that. You know. And so a lot of those things uh, could, could happen in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a battlefield. The whole question of that proportional, what is permissible specific categories of things which could be permissible, specific category of persons who could be subjected to attack, you know, and thirdly, you know, that uh, which are the specific category of people who could be immune from harm. You know, so far as uh, these things are concerned, you know. So entire corpus of the IHL, you know, the principles of IHL, you know, they try to distinguish between civilians and combatants. Civilians are always free from harm, you know, whereas the combatant, that any combatant is somebody who is able to carry arms openly, who could simply stand up and fight the adversary, you know. As long as a person is standing, as long as a person is carrying the arms openly, and shows the willingness to fight for you know he is a combatant and once the entire one of the main 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 saving grace or one of the main focus of the ihl is that those who are non combatants and of course you know they are almost equated with the civilians civilians are not the people those who do not wear uniform those who do not carry you know weapons those who do not have the willingness or ability to fight the adversary you know they are the people who will be uh, uh, who will, who will be who will be under the protective umbrella of the international humanitarian law and so as a as a corollary the international humanitarian law provides a, 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 a shield of protection against the, the people category of people who are called over the combat people who are out of action people who who do not carry arms openly people who are unable because of they are wounded they are sick they are male or who have fallen on the battleground you know and who they say like once you you fall to the battleground you know or who are who you are not able to fight you know your adversary then you automatically come under the protective umbrella of the international human so you, the basic rationale is not to inflict unnecessary suffering or pain you know which will cover a large part of i will not have the time to go into that including the the munitions the weapons the the the, the different kinds of the kinds of the and so the projectiles and other things which could inflict unnecessary suffering, they are prohibited. Then the IHL also swears by proportionality. That if you, you know, like you fight a combatant, will fight a combatant. Principle of necessity, how much, you know, and that these are the, there are, these are the, there are references in Mahabharata, especially about the, the issue of necessity. You know, some of the projectiles, you know, you know, which one of the, one of the like, where they, you know, you know, Khan try, uh, trying to do it, or like like uh, you know, Bhishma trying to do it, Arjuna trying to do it, and then they say there is a warning to to him, you know, saying that well, don't use it because this is this is something which will destroy the earth. Once you invoke that Brahmastra, you know, they say this cannot be done, you know. So there is a prohibition in certain, you know, in those times it was there. Now in these times also we have large number of those you know means and methods of warfare which are not permissible, and one of the important you know which everybody will be familiar is what is called like the nuclear weapons you know, because they say nuclear weapons do not differentiate between combatants and non combatants so they automatically you know they are ruled out you know proportionality you know that you will fight or you will use that much force which is proportional to the amount of threat which is posed to you what could be necessity and this principle has often been you know become a controversial argument you know what is called military necessity that was it warranted was that particular use of force, firing of a missile, that projectile, was it a military necessity? Like we have been witnessing, you know, in this uh, current standoff, you know, in the in the Gaza Strip between the between the, you know, rebel that group, you know, Hamas, which is holding on to the holding on to the territory of Gaza and the Israeli defense forces. You no, know, 
you know the question is can you do that can you do it you know a particular kind of a force you know the projectile firing of the projectiles which you know could be could be simply targeting the civilian areas for instance or several specific category of places like places of worship educational institutions or or any other residential areas you know and often you have the argument where the you know israel defense forces have said you know, like they said there were several areas the the buildings which are targeted you know where they say which house the 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 press you know like the like reuters or al jazeera or some of those networks you know they were asked to vacate the area on the ground that hamas intelligence uh, you know uh, uh, headquarters was located in that particular building which they wanted to raise to the ground they wanted to simply demolish and they say the all the occupants were given just one hour notice to leave the building and they did raise the entire entire multi story building to the ground so question was was it a military necessity no military necessity you know so there are all issues which and the principle of humanity you know you so humanity that basically your effort is to humanize the warfare you know and again let me uh, give you little uh, that that uh, you know uh, peep peep you know, peep into that that uh, you know that one of the bollywood hindi movies you know border you know where you know you could see a, a, a pakistani soldier who is grievously wounded you know is is brought into the trench you know by the by the by the other side the indian soldiers and then he he seeks water and then he is given water and then the, he pleads you for mercy saying that you know please spare me please don't uh, you know harm me you know so they say uh, they call him you know saying that you know he is your enemy but he is your once he is fallen to the ground you know he is subjected to he requires the same amount of empathy which which any normal human being is entitled to for instance you know that is the that is the basic or or take the example of somebody like you know we had the example like you know during that uh, uh uh that surgical strike in the 2016 when india's one of the fighter jets was 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 uh, was uh, was uh, you know uh, uh, you know attacked you know by uh, you know uh, in, in in 2019 sorry 2019 you know in the in the second uh, second bit first went uh, uh, unchallenged and unacknowledged but the second were where the pakistani fighter jets uh, actually you know chased the you know that uh, indian aircraft you know and uh, you know led by that uh, you know Uh, uh you know captain abhimanyu you no know, the who who uh, the, the plane was shut down and then he 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 ejected out of it and then you know he uh, through the parachute comes to, and here is a classic example of somebody a pilot you know who is who has bailed out you and question is that he automatically comes under the protective umbrella he cannot be shot in the air or once he comes to the ground you know he cannot be inflicted with any kind of a torture or any kind of, he automatically comes under the umbrella of prisoner of war you know protect the you know, protection of ihl is available to the person you know now i will not go into that our corpus because then i will miss the other target so ihl basically covers as i said protect specific category of persons who are not or who no longer are taking part in the fighting secondly restriction the means and methods of warfare which are permissible which are not permissible and ihl also tar- Help focus on two two issues. One is the arm actual arm conflict where two or more store sovereign states are involved. You know, and this wide subject to wide corpus of principles. You know, those four Geneva Conventions of 1949 and two uh, uh, additional uh, protocols, Geneva you know, protocols. You know, 1977. So that comprises something like approximately. You know, I think about imposing corpus of 600 articles, 600 articles, which with the IHL actually. uh i you know carries the those 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 two plus uh, you know uh, you know uh, four plus two 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 instrument and also these uh, geneva conventions also cover you know non international arms conflict you know about uh, where there is just conflict is taking place within the same state you know but in the regular armed forces and the rebel groups you know and then what could be applicable we have seen series of those conflicts taking place raging around the world you know much more than the uh, interstate uh, armed conflicts you know, taking place in theaters of warfare like of course we see gaza where the two rebel groups are fighting and it's the same territory almost on the one side is israel the other side is hamas you know the question of the boundary and question of the it's the same territory same territory almost same to be it's a divided you know you had the example like in sri lanka between the between the sri lankan forces and ltt you had the example in the nepal where between the nepal army and the maoist uh, insurgents you had the example you know various other 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 cases where the this internal armed you know conflicts are sought to be 
Now, uh, this is one of the very famous uh, monograph, uh, you know, memory of Solferino by Henry Dunant, you know, you know, who is considered the father of Red Cross and first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, you know, and uh, who wrote this uh, uh, thing. And he actually, uh, it led to the establishment of uh, ICRC. He was the one who, who was instrumental in establishing the ICRC. Now, there are a series of those instruments. I will not have the time to go into them. As I said, uh, uh, the four Geneva Conventions, two additional protocols, 1954 Hague Convention for the protection of the cultural property in the event of armed conflict. This is one of the important, along with these two protocols. You have the Biological Weapons Convention, you have the you know, Chemical Weapons Convention, you have the conventions, you know, on Conventional Weapons Convention, you have the Ottawa Convention on Anti Personal Mind, you have uh, series of others, you know, uh, you know, which and one of the latest uh, protocol to the Geneva Convention came in 2005 uh, relating to the additional distinctive emblems. You know. So whole corpus is sought to be defined in terms of what is to be done, how it is to be done. And this is the only neutral entity which is allowed to go to the battleground. You know, even you must have seen recently about the COVID-19 pandemic when a lot of countries had offered relief supplies to India. You know, they say the the entire relief material was supposed to have been channeled through the Red Cross, the, the Indian Red Cross, for instance, which is the neutral organ that works impeccably, you know, for instance, that is the only organ neutral entity which is allowed to have access to the battlefield, you know, and it has to follow a particular protocol to, to, to avail that, uh, you know, to ensure that the rebel groups don't fire upon, although there are there are those risks which are uh, there, you know. Now, let me come to the, this uh, quickly to the three three important uh, uh, components. One is, of course, the natural environment. And as they say, uh, uh, you know, they say when, when elephants fight, it's the grass which suffers. You know. Whenever there is a fight, you know, you know, usually most of the cases is a, is a natural environment which pays a heavy price because that provides a natural shield to the combatants, you know, both to the to the to the to the parties in power, the governmental forces as well as the rebel groups. Though. Many of them, you know, in the, ranging from 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 Colombia to, to to Nepal to Sri Lanka to Myanmar to you know Burma, plenty of those places where the rebel groups are fighting, they have been able to survive precisely because they have the that natural shield, you know, where they could uh, and and what else you know that could be the best example than the Vietnam War, where again the Vietnamese you know rebel groups could fight the American uh, American troops, you know, because they had the green cover to protect, and you saw ultimately when the one of the very, 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 very lethal decision with the American forces took was they thought since the rebels are taking taking shelter in the natural environment, they will they will simply denude the Vietnamese forest and they actually use a, Agent Orange as a defoliant, you know, through the through the uh, Air Force plane, you know, they, they simply sprayed and they which simply uh, you know uh, destroy Vietnam's uh, uh, forest, you know, which which went unaccounted for, for instance, you know. And I just just mentioned the ICRC's guidelines in the protection of the natural environment in the armed conflict, November 2020, which has just come out. I will not go into that. Out, but let me try to just flag some of the issues which are important so far as the natural resources are concerned. And if you look, notice very carefully, large number of the conflicts in the world are, you know, driven by fights over the nature, fights over natural resources, like Africa, like the diamonds, you know, the entire struggle, you know, and plenty of the debor and plenty of those, those those multinational corporations which are involved, you know, and uh, that is why often this is called, you know, the blood diamonds, you know, that the people wear when they wear diamonds, you know, they say you are carrying the blood of uh, the people, the animals, the the, 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 the the entire natural environment, for instance, you know, I think you desecrate, destroy, because the companies, you know, have been engaging those things. So look at the way in which the entire, you know, the, the people who are there, the very ruthless manner is the mafias they operate. So there is a deadly combination, you know, in the, you know, you know, so far as the uh, uh, natural resources are concerned, these kind of precious resources are concerned, and how the armed conflicts are taking place. The rebel groups they fight among each other, you know. And many of the cases, the the resources have become the 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 bane or the menace for the country's concern because of the resources, you know. The f fighting has been taking place. Government forces, the rebel forces, whoever is in control, uh, in, in a position to command or control the resources, you know, really do it. And that is why plenty of the the, the money, you know, you know, uh, from from blood diamonds, from gold, precious minerals, or even even forest, forest, this destruction of forest or culling of the animals. 
So there is a huge deadly combination, you know. So far as the arma, global armament trade is concerned, the armed conflicts are concerned, and the natural resources are concerned. And here is a, one of the uh, a list, you know, about you know uh, 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 internal armed conflicts, you know, which are natural resource driven armed conflicts, which have taken place. Something like eighteen armed conflicts have been have been, have taken place since nineteen ninety, which are actually fueled by natural resources: Afghanistan, Angola, Burma, Cambodia, Colombia, Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, Indonesia. Liberia, Nepal, Bougainville, Peru, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Sudan, you know, and look at each of the natural resources which is the driving force. Sometimes it's oil, sometimes it's diamond, sometimes it's timber, sometimes it's gold, sometimes it's, you know, you know, other, uh, plenty of other, other, other things which je precious gems and others, you know, for instance, which are actually fueling many of these, these armed conflicts, you know. The other flip side is, of course, you know, natural resources have become a victim, you know, so far as the, you know, being, being used as, as I said, the soft belly to destroy and desecrate, you know, and this is something not new, nothing new, nothing new. I think even, even they say during the Great War, you know, First World War, the Second World War, and Russians have been, have been, have been having the mastery over uh, what is called, you know, uh, uh, scorch earth policy. You know, Hindi me, uh, Gujarati me kehte hai, you know, Gujarati me bhi kehte hai, dhikti, dhara, dhikti dhara ni niti. Or Hindi me bhi kehte hai, you know, dhikti dhara ki niti, you know. Means ki, you create scorch as policy, you know. It's a different matter that there are some, some uh, genius, uh, there are several people, I'm, 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 I'm first and privy to the, the, the verbosity of some of the people, you know. Uh, I, I don't want to give the names of many of the people who have been, you know, uh, boasting and in the bravado saying that hum mar gaye, iske baad gaye dunia. what happens i don't care so we'll 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 we'll, we'll destroy we'll, we'll simply create a situation where nothing survives you know and i had to argue with these people i said how can you how can you claim that once you are no more things should you know i i, I don't care you know? that's exactly what many of these these vicious people have been doing you know desecrating destroying you know denuding the place you know nothing should survive you know then once, as long as I am there, I will take the benefits. You know. A lot of sovereign states have been doing it. The Russians did it when they withdrew, you know, when the Germans, uh, uh, you know, were, you know, marching, you know, and then they withdrew. And when, by the time, you know, they, it was a fatal mistake on the part of the German forces. By the time the Russian winter had set in and hundreds of thousands of the German troops perished, you know. So this is exactly what you do. Destroy, desecrate. I think I'm told about the, even the Iran-Iraq warfare, the Kuwait, you know, for instance, you know, you know, so when, when, when Iraqi forces said, they say, say the, Iran, the, the, the Kuwaiti oil, oil, oil wells were set on fire. Who did it? We still don't know. Although the blame was put, put on, the, on the Iraqi forces, you know, saying that it was the Iraqi forces which has set the oil wells on fire. You know. So natural resource could be destroyed, desecrated, or like the, these kind of fires could be there, or like the aircraft which really, really you know, sprayed agent deadly agent orange you know the defoliant you know which destroy vietnam's forest you know so you could do it you know and often we have the many of the places you know which which suffer you know when the when the when the when the rivals they fight you know you destroy the place you know, destroy any 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 sacred place you know including many of the places of learning also you destroy because you are fighting a particular warfare you know. so same human human you vicious human streak is at at, at work you know and nothing you don't 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 leave anything and it can it can take a heavy toll it could also take heavy toll like setting the setting the forest on fire and often they say rebel groups have been doing this uh, uh, this vicious tactic you know like amazon for instance or, of course it could also take place on you know on natural grounds also because of too much harsh uh, somewhere also it could be man made you know and often the rebel groups have been have been have been trying to take advantage of you set the things on fire and then, of course, the other side will be on, on defense. And this could ha happen for months together, destroy hundreds and thousands of hectares of, of, terms of those precious, uh, uh, you know, you know, forest areas, you know. So, but anything could be at, at the altar of warfare. Anything could be, could be sacrificed, you know, by, by, by both the governmental forces and even the, even the, even the rebel groups. Because largely it's the rebel groups and the governments wants, uh, wants to do that, you know. So, they, they, they also can do it. You can, of course, put a blame on 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 the other side. You know, you know, you try to be paragon of virtue. And here also that brings to the fore what what you call that that very 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 alarming phenomenon of rising environmental crimes. You know, crimes. You know, where you know because this actually fuels the warfare, the conflicts. You know, 
the rebel group how do the rebel group survive culling of the animals elephants for instance you know rhinos elephants you know because this 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 environmental you know uh, you know trade you know this kind of the wildlife wildlife crimes which are taking wildlife trade which is taking place is a multi billion dollar business the fueling of it you know how much you know you sacrifice of course the timber then the culling of the animals like 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 anima, uh, elephants or like tiger or like uh, like rhinos and several other uh, animals or like diamonds i mentioned already mentioned so this actually fuel city you know, because how do the rebel groups uh, generate the funding how do they buy the armaments you know how do they do it and last part of this thing comes from the ready made uh, uh, resources you know which could be there you know for them you know any, anything could be 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 disposable for instance you know now let me come to the other other important component you know which is the cultural heritage as i said that something which is happening is what 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 is probably called you know it's a euphemistically described as a cannon fodder in the in the wake of the warfare you know like i said then natural resources you know animals timber anything could be could be could be or anything could be anything of value could be could be could be could be sacrificed you know it could be what is called cannon fodder and here cultural heritage could be another cannon fodder you know, which could be done and here again they say probably on the part of the tactic you know they say that you you hit where it hurts you most you know you know that is what i that is why i use the word called soft belly you know that means it will hurt you most you know and all these three natural environment like if you if you set the forest on fire it will naturally be very painful the all the communities the all the you know animals the bird life and also your heritage you lose that same thing could also happen so far as the cultural heritage and cultural heritage has become again a turf war you know over the centuries all the armaments all the all the fighting armies have taken that you know the, all of them they have been instrumental in 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 you know using you know uh, you know destruction of the uh, those heritage sites you know and in the recent like there are this you know, bombardment of many of the places like the place of varshi you know which which could be could be fired upon because that will hurt you that will hit you you know or like the bamiyan buddhas you know in 2001 when when taliban when when came to power in in, in afghanistan you know they wanted to erase afghanistan's pre islamic past you know because there are people who could be very vicious you know Would not like you know you want to want the well, history cannot be rewritten whether you like it or not history is part of history has already taken place you know and you must like there are people who say well you must accept because this was part of our history try to take the best out of it why feel because this cannot be rewritten the clock cannot be put back and that is exactly what one of the biggest predicament is there you know but there are people who are highly intolerant very vicious. because something and anybody whoever comes to power whoever holds the holds the power you know could be in a position to decide what history you should inherit what history you should be proud of what history you should allow to prosper and here is the was the classic example when taliban came to power you know it was not recognized by any, anyone including india i think for a long period of time india did not recognize taliban for it. like you remember indian airlines flight which was taken to kandahar when you know india's very with a formidable foreign minister you know which is very you know very rare in a india's independent india's history you know who who personally led from the front went there you know to negotiate you know from the from the taliban you know which india had not recognized you know and when he met taliban on the on the tarmac of kandahar airport he said well you know you know india in principle does not recognize taliban but we have to deal with them because they were the party in in in, in physical control you know and the same taliban was so vicious because no one was recognizing no one was talking although they were in power for about 5 to 6 years or so they had dealt with ruthlessly you know they had uh, you know done away with the former uh, afghan president mohammad najibullah they destroyed he was pulled out of the un compound and they, they, and then they thought well this is one of the best thing which we which they can do to do demonstrate to the world that their capacity to to destroy so they picked up this uh, uh, you know giant you know standing buddhas which is carved out the of the rock you know 2000 year old uh, buddha uh, you know they, and they used machine guns and mortars to carve out they couldn't destroy the it was a part of a mountain terrain they couldn't destroy the mountain so they thought that well we'll carve out 
this gaping holes there you know like a lot of people they do it then i you know all of you can relate you know the human conduct you know how you do it you know you know to your 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 batchmate to your colleagues your neighbors you know you know anything to your relatives you know this is what you you try to do you know cause that kind of a damage you know which could be visible palpable which will be felt seriously down the generations you realize that and here was the example bamian buddhas and in the recent times you know recent years there are these attacks in nimrud in iraq and on churches in syria for instance you know the the or like in yemen where the merciless carpet bombing has been has been uh, going on you know or several other areas you know like like uh, like in you know like like uh, you know ukraine has complained about uh, this for instance you know in the wake of the you know crimean annexation of crimea by 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 russia the warfare which is still uh, going on different uh, trouble zones you know now here the question is why culture you know is is up for grab you know because culture you know is is your past you know you know it is speaks represents a particular people you cannot be you cannot be detached whether it is not withstanding what the what the pakistanis are claiming you know you know because again it's a very represent or what what people could be claiming here on this side of the we are not also paragons of virtue you know that you denounce discredit you know you know you you feel hesitate to accept something which has been a common repository you know the pakistanis although they try to ally themselves with the arabian world you know but their 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 their, their past present and future lies with with the indian subcontinent they were part of india and the the common things you know uh, which which you represent you know you know i think and so culture has been considered to be a mirror of the humanity you know and it represents the identity of the people it's a crucial link between your past and the present and lot of things which which are derived from culture this is like culture like indonesians have been claiming and i, I recall that example by by indonesian president you know uh, uh, you know who uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know suharto you know who uh, who who spoke about when the uh, the pakistani president was uh, visiting and uh, they had staged ramayana for instance you know and of course indonesia is is world's largest uh, islamic country largest population and here they were staging ramayana and the the visiting pakistani president uh, asked him you know saying excellency how do you do it and this was a very befitting answer which indonesia had given you know indonesian president gave he said excellency we have changed our religion but we have not changed our culture our culture is this one and so we are proud to showcase our culture so culture is something a connecting thread you know it has nothing to do with religion culture is common like in this state like kerala where you know they say irrespective of the religion people share the same culture or many other states in india for instance you know you which you must feel because it relates to your identity identity as a people for instance you know and here is the one where anyone who who is a stronger one or or in the position to call the shots if we, they, they they try to try to dis, desecrate and destroy cultural the monuments the place of worship or your cultural heritage site your museums you know like they say when the american forces were on the ground in baghdad city you know they say when the american soldiers stood guard the 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 baghdad museum was actually looted it was looted by people it was allowed to be looted all the artifacts vanished you know they 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 simply appeared you know in in sotheby's and other 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 you know other auction houses in europe for instance you know. but most of the invading troops have been doing this you now you carry whatever they say when the iranian you know invader came you know nadir shah came he took away that very famous you know the the peacock throne you know from 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 india for instance you know. all the plunderers who came all the ghaznis and the goris and nadir shah and you know all the afghans uh, who came you know from central asia anybody who came anywhere for instance they wanted to plunder they came for loot you know main mandate was loot plunder set on fire take women folk at as 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 captives you no know, take them as as slaves you know all these these invaders had a respect to your what 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 from where they came for instance you know and cultural artifacts have been one of the important what is called the war booty most of the people like they say the rival claims to the french and the germans or germans and the russians you know about taking away each other's paintings you know you know sculptures and they don't 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 hand them back to to the to the country which has claimed you because you carry it away cart you know because here are something which are easy to carry those big monuments like like the buildings you cannot carry with you big and building that is why the buildings are sort to be destroyed place of worship institutions architectural marvels for instance you know because that that hurts you most you know 
and so this is one of the important uh, i would say the predicament which the human kind has been facing plenty of those places of worship or those beautiful monuments which which are the repository of the of the past of a people you know for instance which are which are you which you had inherited which could be a synchronicity of two different cultures for instance you know and that is why they are called like the archaeological survey of india has been preserving plenty of those monuments you know you know has been declared as national national heritage sites for instance you know unesco has been having the entire program you know on you know cultural and natural heritage sites you know has been trying to preserve those those sites you know which came up you know at a particular time in history and you inherited so they say they are the they are the they are the heritage of the entire mankind although they could be located like when you go to the qutub minar you know it's there is a there is a unesco you know brass plaque at the outside you know there or humayun's tomb or taj mahal you know they are called you know those monuments which are called you know repositories of human kind they are located within the country but considered to be the heritage you know or like havelis in amdavad which was actually you know almost you know made or or other uh, se several other 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 objects you know, which you you feel proud about you know you know they belong to the entire mankind and they should be not be subjected to harm you know now i will not go into the entire architecture so far as the uh, you know means and math i think as i said there are references in different religions like agni puran for instance or like you know edicts of manu like in quran holy quran which uh, prohibits fights in sacred places like mosque or historian polybius of athens you know who called for i'm talking about 146 bc you know went to destruction of temples or first caliph Abu Bakr, who 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 had who had admonished people not to destroy the monasteries, you know, or Saint Augustine, you know, which is looting and desecration of places of worship, you know, or like you know, Eric of Manu, where victorious king should worship in the temples, you know, and and honor the priests, for instance, or Agni Puran, you know, where where temples, gardens, or or those things need to be you no know, protected, you know, or Hugo Grotius, Frederick, Emmerich de Wettel. you know and several other scholars have spoken about uh, that part you know i'm talking about you know uh, you know before 1863 or so you know and subsequently because the why it is very important because the for the first time you know the code liber came which spoke about uh, the the laws and customs of warfare you know to protect the protect the uh, sites and other things you know now let me let me skip this part otherwise you know i will uh, miss out the other things you know i will not uh, simply go so for the cultural uh, all these conventions have been speaking about it you know and next specialist so far as the protection of the cultural heritage site is concerned is the called the hague convention of 1954 you know in the event of armed conflict you know uh, which has been which was adopted in 54 ratified by 118 states uh, and the scope covers you know movable immovable monuments of architecture art history archaeological site works of art manuscripts books and several other objects and it provides for the entire working mecha mechanism you know for the protection you know and there are two hague protocols uh, uh, you know uh, protocol 1 and protocol 2 talks about it two geneva conventions speak about the cultural heritage sites you know that uh, is seven c you know uh, seven protocol you know uh, 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 speak about the historical monument works of art places of worship they are they come under the protective umbrella and of course you know the international criminal responsibility now of course the 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 statute of the you know international tribunal for you know yugoslavia has specifically provided for you know a uh, seizure of destruction willful damage done to the institutions dedicated to religion charity education arts and sciences historical monuments works of art and science etc you know for the first time uh, uh, this was a tribunal established by resolution of the united nations security council and of course the rome statute of the international criminal court 1998 specifically applicable to international conflicts and it spoke about you know non international armed conflicts also uh, which prohibits you know destruction of the monuments and the cultural property so there is a and now there are a growing evidence about many of this ad hoc international criminal tribunals where the 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 perpetrators have been prosecuted on specific charges though, for destruction desecration of the cultural property you know. so there is a new charge apart from war crimes genocide and crimes against humanity these new crimes are charges are also being although there are a little softer level but well the very fact that this is still a a a, a beginning you know now let me come to the third important component of uh, this uh, issue you know which is called the gender sexual and the 
gender based uh, gender based uh, uh, violence this is something very very ominous for instance you know and let me let me try to show you through through contrasting picture here is a uh, uh, a representative picture you know uh, uh, you know i have taken from one of the document where the two rebel uh, rebel fighters are taking you know uh, a woman who has been grievously wounded or she's dead and she, she's been killed, uh, taken in a, in a pole you know look at the way in which you know very 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 shocking picture you know where uh, and she 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 could have been subjected to you know uh, uh, you know the all that is what the what the most of the marauding uh, armed groups are 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 known for you know you know causing the bodily injury rape and and other kind of other, other you know uh, uh, grievous uh, you know harm to the to the woman folk you know and other contrasty picture is two two nobel laureates you know denis <coughs> mukwege from democratic republic of congo and and yes the woman you know nadia burad you know who were awarded the nobel nobel peace prize in 2018 now before i embark upon that let me since i i, I mentioned about let me that briefly show you a clip which will speak you know maybe more compared to what uh, you know uh, 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 and then I'll, I'll, i'll again revert but just is a it's about a 16 minutes clip but i will just stay for 5 minutes or so this actually about the uh, you know for the first time you know in the history of nobel 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 prize you know for the first time a nobel peace prize was explicitly awarded you know to to this two proponents you know on concerning you know sexual violence in the in the conflict zones you know. morning the norwegian nobel committee has decided to award the nobel peace prize for 2018 to denis mukwege and nadia murad for their efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict Both laureates have made a crucial contribution to focusing attention on and combating such war crimes. Dennis McLeague is the helper who has devoted his life to defending these victims. Nadia Murad is the witness who tells of the abuses perpetrated against herself and others. Each of them in their own way uh, has helped to give greater visibility to wartime sexual violence so that the perpetrators can be held accountable for their actions the physician dennis mcgregor has spent large parts of his adult life helping victims of sexual violence in the democratic republic of congo Since the Pansi Hospital was established in Bakavu in 2008, Dr. Mukwege and his staff have treated thousands of patients who have fallen victims to such assaults. Most of the abuses have been committed in the context of a long-lasting civil war that has cost the lives of more than 6 million Congolese. Dennis McQuaigue is the foremost most unifying symbol both nationally and internationally of the struggle to end sexual violence in war and armed conflicts. His basic principle is that justice is everyone's business. Men and women, officers and soldiers local national and international authorities alike all have a shared responsibility for reporting and combating this type of war crime the importance of dennis mcgregor's enduring dedicated and selfless efforts in this field cannot be overrated he has repeatedly condemned impunity for mass rape 
and criticise the Congolese government and the other countries for not doing enough to stop the use of sexual violence against women as a strategy and a weapon of war. Nadia Murad is herself a victim of war crimes. She refused to accept the social codes that required women to remain silent and ashamed of the abuses to which they had been subjected. She has shown uncommon courage in recounting her own suffering and speaking up on behalf of other victims. Nadia Murad is a member of the Yazidi minority in northern Iraq, where she lived with her family in the remote village of Kocho. In August 2014, the Islamic State, ISIS, launched a brutal, systematic attack on the villages of the Sinjar region aimed at exterminating the Yazidi population. In Nadia Murad's village, several hundred people were massacred. The younger women, including underage children, were abducted and held as sex slaves. While the captive of the ISIS, Nadia Murad was repeatedly subjected to rape and other abuses. Her assaulters threatened to execute her if she did not convert to their hateful, inhuman version of Islam. Nadia Murad is just one of an estimated 3,000 Yazidi girls and women who were victims of rape and other abuses by the ISIS army. The abuses were systematic and part of a military strategy. Thus, they served as a weapon in the fight against Yazidis and other religious minorities. After a three-month nightmare, Nadia Murad managed to flee. Following her escape, she chose to speak openly about what she had endured. And in 2016, at the age of just 23, she was named the UN's first goodwill ambassador for the dignity of survivors of human trafficking. This year marks a decade since the UN Secretary Council, excuse me, UN Security Council, adopted Resolution 1820, which determined that the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict constitutes both a war crime and a threat to international peace and security. Well, uh, uh, I hope, I think, yeah, that, that probably a uh, little, you know, set the tone, you know, so far as, you know, as I mentioned, the very, very, very nature of the, on the gravity of the, of the entire, entire, you know, crisis, uh, you know, which, uh, which we are facing. So what uh, the, for the first time, emphatically what the Nobel, no, Norwegian Nobel Committee had underscored, you know, that, you know, uh, sexual violence as a weapon of warfare, as I, as we saw it earlier, the two more weapons, which I call the soft bellies, the natural environment, desecration, destruction of the natural environment, which includes animals, forest, or anything, you know, or cultural heritage sites, you know, your place of worship, educational institution, your statues, your, your sculptures, your paintings, your anything which you hold, you, 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 you consider to be very sacred, you know, which is part of your identity, your existence. It's, and the third is the woman folk, you know, which are traditionally considered to be very weak. And they say, well, the, the many of these warfare are fought on the woman's body becomes the, 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 the battlefront, you know, where different war infections, they, they do it. You know. We have the numerous examples, you know, the, the, those, those uh, rebel groups, you know, in Liberia, in, 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 in Nigeria, in, 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 you know, you know, this IS, you know, Syria, Iraq front, you know, there are plenty of women have been taken, you know, as sex slaves, you know, for instance, you know, 
brutally raped. You know? And so here the, the phenomenon which we are talking about, you know, is not uh, something which has always been there, you know, like the, as I mentioned, you know, when the invading troops came, you know, the orders were there, you know, to loot, plunder, set on fire the things, you know, whatever came in their way, they will simply take it away, including women folk. They were to be taken, you know, and that is why we, we, we had, you know, all of you are, are, are aware of that very, very painful, that, that practice, you know, which, which had uh, been developed in the Rajputana when the, when this many of these marauding hordes came, you know, you know, from Central Asia, you know, you know, especially, you know, the, I think Afghans came, many of the others came, you know, from Central Asia, you know, especially even, even the, after the, even the Mughals came, you know, and before them, some of the others, you know, they say, when, when there was no chance for survival, they say before the men, you know, will, will venture out of the fort, you know, at the final kind of the battle, they say all the women will carry, you know, carry out mass suicides called, you know, Johar, you know, the practice. That is exactly the reason behind, you know, because they thought because there, you know, they would have simply, because the society itself thought that, you know, any kind of such thing, you know, brutal kind of a kind of a thing, you know, which you do against the woman folk will be, will be something, uh, they say better to, you know, die rather than, you know, you know, you know, uh, fall in the hands of these uh, these marauding hordes. You know, so here a particular sexual violence is being used. It's not rape out of control, but rape under orders. Rape under orders as a means of pursuing military, political, economic ends. Then you, as I said, you hit where it hurts you most. The entire woman for and this many of those 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 those, those people have 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 carried out these. Uh, these kinds of practices, though, in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the in the face of imminent defeat in the warfare, a lot of people have like the like in imminent defeat in in you know that uh, Eastern 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 Front in 1971 war, just before the uh, before the Pakistani command had surrendered to you know General Niazi had surrendered to Indian Army, the order were given to the Pakistani forces, you know, to rape the Bangladeshi women. They say we still do not have the exact figure. They range from 200,000 to 400,000 Bangladeshi women were raped. You know. There is no documentation about it. You know. And so what makes it work is precisely this entire issue is what is called the walls of silence, which cover the bricks of shame, stigma, fear, futility, you know, like, you know, the Norwegian, you know, the chair of the Norwegian committee herself, she said, you know, she, Nadia Murad broke that wall of silence, you know, against the community's belief, you know, pro, you know, prohibition that she will not speak up. Because this is, it's a matter of shame for the community when a community has been subjected to rape, you know. But that is exactly why the marauding hordes they work because there's no very well that here you you hate a person where you can't even complain because it's a, it's a sense of shame, you know, on on your on on the entire community's part because these 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 marauding hordes had raped the woman, you know. And plenty of places these these you know. Orders are given, you know, to rape the rape the rape the uh, you know communities, for instance, you know. And often it is being said, you know, they say rape is more more cheaper, you know, you know, than even even use a bullet, you know, because he this and this lethal it works more lethally against it. Like plenty of those cases, you know, in Sierra Leone war or in, in like Rwanda and each of the cases where this instrument was used, you know, with lethal 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 effect, for instance, you know, and here, for instance, you know, for the first time, a refreshing thing came. I'm, you know, like Sierra Leone warfare, where the the women were used as, you know, bushwives, you know, you know, you know, they were used as slave, sex slaves, you know, for instance, you know, large number of women were like Boko Haram has been doing that in the, in Nigerian conflicts, for instance. But for the first time, against the you know different calls which are being given about this, most of these criminal tribunals which have been established, both the you know, especially during the Second World War, you know. None of the people, the perpetrators were charged with these crimes, you know, of sexual offenses. For the first time in 2015, the International Criminal Court put, you know, press charges against, you know, Bosco Natanga, you know, the deputy chief of staff and commander of the, you know, liberation of, you know, the Patriot Forces for the liberation of Congo, you know. And he was charged with war crimes, crimes against humanity. And for the first time, this military, senior military figure was, uh, a charge for rape and sexual slavery committed against the child soldiers within his own militia groups, you know. So it has not yet come on the radar screen, for instance, you know. South Asia, I mentioned about it, the Bangladesh warfare, you know, 
numerous accounts that this is a, a, a statue in 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 in, in you know, Mujib Nagar, you know, in Dhaka, which depicts the rape of Bangladeshi women, you know, during the Liberation War. So the statue speaks volumes about the 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 lethal capacity of of how the of the and this is exactly what became a bone of contention when those more than ninety thousand Pakistani soldiers were surrendered to the Indian command, you know, you know, which India allowed to go under the Shimla Agreement and. Under 65 or so, those people who were responsible for worse crimes, you know, they were also allowed to go. Probably there was a some understanding, you know, between even Bangladesh. Then, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mukti Bahini, the chief, you know, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and others, you know, because these are the things which are at the highest uh, the political level and compromises are struck. Although they they leave lasting wounds on the people, you know, lasting. And this is exactly how people perpetuate the memory, so that you don't and. Always, it's been said that those who forget history are condemned to repeat it. And so here is that 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 sculpture, you know, which you know commemorates the that all the pain and agony the Bangladeshi woman had 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 really uh, under undergone, for instance. And here is another classic example, which is the about the comfort woman example, you know, where they say the Japan Japanese troops became notorious, you know, for something like two hundred thousand women and girls from Korea, China, Taiwan, and Philippines, you know. Were forced to work as prostitutes in Japanese official military brothels. You know, they were abducted and 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 kept there. You know, and you saw. You know, here is the example. You know, of of the comfort they are called comfort stations, which were established by the Japanese military. You know, and so when the, there was a after the end of the war, Japan surrendered and you know, which was uh, demilitarized. You know, after the uh, the Tokyo trial took place, but in the Tokyo trial, none of the Japanese commanders were were subjected to these charges. Though. Know? For for sexual crimes, you know, for instance, you know, it's still a bone of contention, you know, between the Chinese, the Koreans, and others, you know. And what the Koreans had next, large number of women who were from Korea, and what the Koreans did was try to shame Japan, Japan, you know. So they try to they they work out the uh, uh, a statue of a of a of a of a Korean woman, you know, and that statue was put in front of the Japanese embassy in Seoul, you know, and Japanese were 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 were, were really were shaken, you know, and that. They consistently, you know, pursued with the with the Koreans to remove this statue, which the Koreans refused. You know, and finally in 2015, Japan, Japanese government, Japanese foreign minister reached an agreement with the Korean government. You know, uh, you know, uh, tendering apology, some kind of a token compensation to the to the to the to the comfort woman, etc. You know, and I remember, recall vividly recall in my my MA 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 class, you know, legal controls of interest conflict when I mentioned about this, it was very fresh story. We had a, 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 a student from Korea, and when I said, "Well, this agreement uh, has taken place," and she raised her hand and she said, "Well, this is not enough." And so then the next question is, "What is enough?" So here is the wounds inflicted in the past. The past cannot be rewritten; it cannot be brought back. Clock, clock cannot be put back. A, 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 a very, very heinous crime was committed. You want to simply put a decent closure, and it's one of the most, most painful chapter. You know. How do you put a closure? And it's exactly what happened when the new Korean government came to power. They reneged from it. They, they they denounced the agreement with the Japanese and actually returned the money which was given to the previous previous Korean government. And that the matter lies. You know. So repeatedly, so something which the previous government had done in Japan, they have to repeatedly feel guilty, apologize. You know, like what the Germans are doing. Germans have been doing repeatedly. You know, you know, tendering apology. I will not go into this entire. That architecture of international law, the instruments, women conflicts, and, and the entire architecture of international law. All the uh, criminal tribunals are there. The Geneva Conventions are there, which I will do. Let me come to the last slide. You know, so in nutshell, you know, the sexual violence has been regarded as a, a neglected crime. It's a gender-specific crime. Women suffer, you know, largely, you know, because you know, again, they are regarded as a inferior in the society. Largely, the patriarchal patri patri societies. They 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 have they they have they they condemn women to that sub subservient status, you know, and both as a human being and as a as a as a you know you know uh, woman gender woman suffer the this double 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 kind of a double kind of a lethal effect, you know, and both states and the non-state actors they commit the crime with impunity. There is a attitude of indifference toward the victim survivor women's lack of sensitization toward the gender issues, stigmatization is there. Large number of women, and I think what else one can give the example than that the partition of India. When in the partition, if you if you recall, when these horrific riots took place, you know, 
and especially on the 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 western front you know they say most of the it was the large number of the women became the sacrificial you know you know you know you know fodder you know so far the riots were concerned we don't have the figures we don't know exactly how many women perished how many suffered irrespective of religion hindus sikhs muslims all Christian, all all women suffered in this uh, this gory uh, you know you know you know you know sexual war which was fought by people and both the governments kept sheepish silence none of them they prosecuted they kept quiet try to cover up hundreds of women they perished in this this war they say many of the cases the families disowned the women many of the women were pushed into 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 brothels you know many of them committed suicide look at the look at the kind of the price the they the, they had played you know and hugely because they said there is a stigmatization and there is exactly the reason why all the all the all the all the troops you know rebels and the governmental forces you know they they commit the crime because they say you know kehte aap aap unko unko sabak sikhana chahte you want to just teach a, a a very very dirty lesson to the to the to the people and the question is can this be deal deed stigmatized can it be delegitimized you know can you and this is again a very this part of my one of the larger corpus of work which is now 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 coming out you know sexual and gender based violence in the international law for instance you know and one of the biggest issue you know and several theaters which are there i i will not uh, mind like even even they say during the pandemic 2020 period or so you know the climate induced disaster induced you know uh, events have exacerbated sexual and gender based violence against against women you know but warfare all conflict zones in you know are notorious where women suffer the most you know and there is a there is a defining quite but of course like what the norwegian chair of the norwegian nobel committee she mentioned you know the security council resolution you know has a front you know now spoken about there you know and there is a theme called you know you know women peace and security there is a uh, uh, you know resolution 1325 which is uh, really then in 2019 also the un security council and un general assembly has adopted resolution you know international committee of the red cross has 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 been taking several initiatives you know so far as the combating this thing is concerned you know and so in in view of these you know and especially award of the nobel peace prize in 2018 you know the question remains you know that will it now turn the tide you know for global action against this heinous crime you know which is really so first and foremost has been acceptance acceptance the veil of silence has to go the walls you know big soft that that shame sense of shame and you know walls have to crumble you know only once you have to accept it that yes it is there you know and the question is how do you put a put a put a put a put a really that kind of a thing you know and one of the thing what dennis mukwe said said in his uh, acceptance speech you know is that why the crime evil suff you know prospers you know you know i again this is one of the one of the and who is evil that that again question remains you know is precisely because you know red carpets are are, are spread you know you don't draw the red lines you know any evil prospers anywhere precisely because there are people who give kid glove treatment who sympathize who keep quiet who cover up who side with them you know that could that evil could be of any any dimension you know evil could be of any dimension for instance you know and that has to be drawn you know that once you draw the line evil will be on the back foot and why we suffer and why we pay the price or we simply lament you know precisely for the reason that we don't don't know how to draw the lines most of the people are afraid you pay lip service you shed crocodile tears though know? that is why the evil prospers it will thrives you know and that is why these things you know really prosper at the all the three soft bellies of international humanitarian law which i mentioned you know the destruction of the natural environment you no know, plunder and, and looting and, and destruction of the cultural heritage sites and of course you know women's you know warfares and conflicts being fought on women's bodies too. because you consider women's women as a as a that is a charity based approach you know it's not a right based approach you know why should women be considered you know can you can you literally consider this as a kind of a grievous bodily injury why should it be considered to be a sense of shame and you know you know violation for the entire community and so you suffer both side the perpetrators they make you suffer the woman you no know, sexual and gender based violence is committed and once these people they leave is a society which 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 punishes them you know they are taunted aap kehte hain ya samaj mein bhi to kehte hain when the rape takes place you know not only the rapists they are 
but one day your your kids and kin your relatives they say sab up you know because you your yourself are responsible because you are wearing the particular kinds of clothes you know so you suffer it's kind of a double double victim hood you know the perpetrators punish you because they know very very well that once we leave the society itself will punish the woman so there is no salvage there is nothing no action takes place so far the perpetrators are concerned so how will you draw the line and so he will thrives prospers maintains you may actually you maintain you know you maintain the maintain jaise kehte hain na when the doctors and the and the lawyers they maintain clients you know here society is you know maintain evil you allow the evil to thrive you know so are you serious and so question is can this come on the on the global radar you know to so take it seriously take this entire climate seriously can you can you can you can you basically delegitimize this thing to prevent and to ultimately eliminate you know sexual and gender based violence in the theater of warfare you know? this is one of the biggest health. can you destigmatize you know? can you destigmatize you know? like you if you lose a limb or so you know you say yes you accept it the question is when a woman for no fault of hers becomes a victim then her mass you know rapes are are you know under orders are, are taking like in bangladesh or like like we still don't know the exact figures in shilanga theater of warfare we know it. there are pictures and stories which came about you know there are channel 4 videos which were circulated but the question is when the perpetrators come to power they try to erase the evidence you know but one thing which we need to remember you know i think the history of you know world shows you know that irrespective of what the passage of time lapse of passage of time shows you know that many of the cases things haunt you things haunt you unless you go for that distant closer of the crime heinous crime which was committed at a particular time in history like the comfort woman issue it haunts japanese by you know korean relations you know for instance unless you put a lead on it it will haunt people irrespective of the party in power you don't think you you are going to be there for eternity and let me mention very vividly the conversation i had with the with the with the icrc you know exactly i was i was speaking to him in the, that how do you manage though ranging from ranging from 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 you know uh, you know you know you know ukraine to to yemen to 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 sahel to different war zones and trouble zones where you see death mayhem you know injury you know then how do you see this marauding horde the viciousness of the human mind that you carry out you destroy natural heritage you destroy cultural sites you destroy you know or you you you, you attack women you, you you know mass crimes you commit you plunder wealth so how do you allow so one of the beautiful thing you know which even mahatma gandhi had said you know you know that many of these people people with evil intentions you know evil designs you will stick with when they strike you know that ultimately the evil always vanishes you know they are not going to be infallible they were always they say gandhi always insists always and this is exactly what the icrc president they said you know that they are not invincible they are not invincible and i think the question is how long question is human endurance is very limited that is exactly what all of us we suffer all of us we wait for that magic that the the miracle to take place then is it enough how long it will take to for the evil to be on the back foot you know and evil cannot be on the back foot unless and until you measure up you know unless you squarely face the evil you know and that is what most of the cases we don't do it you know whether one of my student does the plagiarism lifts an article you don't call you know bluff you know you don't don't squarely face large number of your your faculty member they cover up so a thief theft is the theft crime is a crime you know and then you complain and creep about it same is the case with these crimes you know heinous crimes you know they persist precisely because there is a mass kind of a connivance on the part of the people and i thought you know after the advent of this 2018 nobel peace prize the agenda coming on the un security council said in the icrc uh, taking it a very serious thing you know i'm sure this one of the very very leading challenge for international law to to come up with you know can there be a kind of a special mechanism to address these uh, these crimes squarely i think i'll just stop here you know because the time you know much time is not left but then have, maybe you can throw the floor uh, open huh? thank you thank you thank you so much professor desai that was an indeed an insightful and brainstorming uh, discussion uh, so now i open the floor for questions or comments please go ahead Yeah. Yes, Vivek. Uh, 
So I have uh, a specific question regarding the present Israel issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, what should be the UN Security Council's position since uh, the its own members do disagree between each other? What has to be done? I mean, to uh, mellow it down, to mitigate the issue. Mm -hmm. Point number two, I also would like to hear from you, how is it different from terrorism? Because as far as uh, my limited knowledge is uh, uh, there is a huge difference between the uh, war crimes and terrorism, as terrorism is largely considered to be uh, happening within the peace time. And uh, why are war crimes not considered as terrorism? Uh, the reason why I'm raising this issue is that uh, in most of the cases, the uh, the consequences are being consequences of war are being penalized, or there is a tendency to criminalize the consequences of war, by which the war itself is legalized. That is the penalty or the criminal or the sanction aspect of a consequence actually legalizes the act. I think uh, if you could throw a little bit light on this, I'd be great. I think this is, yeah, the, you're right. This is, there is nothing new about it, Vivek. You know, this is something, as I said, you know, this is something what the, uh, you know, uh, human, uh, it's a flip side of the human conduct, you know. That always you try to, and that's exactly what the, why the crime, that is what, what I was mentioning, why the, why this, Acts and activities, you know, which are which are which are violations, you know, they persist precisely because there are red carpets which are being 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 uh, laid out, you know. You don't draw the red lines. Once the red red lines are drawn, there is a something will be on the back foot because there is always somebody who will cover up. It happens precisely because somebody covers up. Somebody, you know, has a lip sympathy. Somebody, you know, uh, uh, as I we mentioned, you know, some you do plagiarism and immediately somebody comes up and who covers up, you know. Or somebody who, you know, when when you ask a teacher to to put signature on a, on a thesis, you know, you know, which he had not seen a single page, you know, your own colleagues are conniving in that part, you know, and everybody sheepishly, you know, connives into that part, you know, and you complain about it that plagiarism is taking place, and somebody who stands up, you know, and uh, the person has to, so you need to bell the cat. You have to, of course, there is a there is this. Each time the crime persists because there are people, like you rightly mentioned, there are people who are who connive into that, people who cover it up, people who draw the red lights. You know, when the dean of the school, you know, allows the particular person who is violating the ordinance, you know, you know, gives a quick glove, it will give a, you know, that ominous message. This is exactly what you are mentioning. The, the members of the UN Security Council giving a, a special treatment to a particular country, which is seen to be doing something. There is nothing. The dean of the school does it, and and the member of parliament, member of the security council. The the behavior is the same. You know, you try to give a kid glove treatment. You know, and that is exactly how can the evil be on the back foot? You know, unless the strong message goes. You know, one faculty member member allows you know a particular person to violate the ordinance. You know, other person says no, and then you 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 take that other faculty member to the to the high court. You know, because the other faculty member has covered up the. Precisely, and and you know the people, you know, like they say, like what the former Indian Prime Minister has said, you know, bathroom me raincoat pehenke nahane ki kala. You go scot free. The perpet perpetrators go scot free. You remain hidden. You just join the parallels, you know. It's very difficult, you know, when you when you when you when you when you when you hear the story, it's very difficult, you know. That is exactly what the flip side is, though, you know. जब हिंदी में कहते नजरें गड़ जाती है शर्म आती है दूसरी साइड में आप देखते हो यू रन अवे दिस वॉट द्यूमन नॉर्मल ह्यूमन कंडलाउंग पर्टिकुलर इविल टू प्रोस्पर इविल टू परसिस्ट देर इज नो सेंस ऑफ शेयर यू डोंट ड्रॉ द रेड लाइट रेड लाइन सीनो सेम बिहेवियर ह्यूमन बिहेवियर इनो तो हाउ कैन अवर पेरेनियल डायलेम वेन विल दैट Particular evil be on the back foot. Why the crimes persist? Because you have the architect. There is nothing per se wrong with the law. Law, legal architecture is there. The sentinel of international humanitarian law remains helpless spectator. Red Cross cannot do anything. You have the resolutions are there. You have the Geneva Corpus of the Geneva Conventions are there. You have the you have the one dozen international criminal tribunals. One dozen international criminal tribunals. 
notwithstanding that why the crime persists on such a such a large scale why the armies and these these rebel groups they they fight destroy natural heritage destroy destroy cultural heritage you know take women captives boko haram has been doing that is has been doing that you saw it 2014 the novel norwegian committee said 2014 nadia murad you know more than 3000 yazdi women were taken as captives as sex slaves they were actually sold they were actually sold repeatedly by people there in this age 21st century you 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 put a price on one woman you know they are being bartered away between the different rebel commanders why it happens precisely because you you cover it up so you have to draw the red line so you cannot cover up anything you know and i think at the see, at the end of the day <coughs> we need to at least take the solace that most of these crimes take place you know and you you saw the world worldwide there is a phenomenon where people look back and admit it like you saw it only recently i think on 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 24th of april you saw what the what what during that notorious act toward the end of the ottoman empire where the where the ottoman ottoman troops had troops had committed those heinous crimes you know heinous crimes you know, against the albanians for it that was that went unpunished unacknowledged for the first time the us president you know in his in a, in a in a statement put on the white house website says that yes we call this armenian massacre as officially genocide after how many years 106 years 106 years you know so the and it it it, it badly rattled the turkish government as a successor state of the ottoman empire you know and everything you have to reckon now you can't put the anybody will say this is not a solace for the people who suffered or or the territory which was brutalized the woman who paid the price but the question is what do you do <coughs> at a particular time in history a particular heinous the very fact that you acknowledge the very fact that you, there is a you know state responsibility is sought to be affixed you know and then the, one of the methods is apology tendering an apology howsoever howsoever remotely a particular heinous crime had taken place there is no other so those but one of the only solace which we can take is irrespective of the passage of time all these perpetrators who go try to go scot free it may not happen during like pol pot's time in cambodia for instance it did not happen during idi amin's time you know it may not happen you may be lucky if you go scot free but the very fact that somebody shall have to bail the cat somebody shall have to take a call on it at some time in the future and that is the that is the only positive because beyond that within the human realm you cannot do anything you know if somebody stands up up front and lot of people do stand up up front and they pay the price they pay the price thank you sir yeah are there any other questions from the participants so i had just one uh, quick question which um, i just uh, seek your opinion on so this uh, recent uh, supreme court judgment which came in the last year of february wherein now uh, women officers will also have permanent commission in the indian army meaning thereby it will create a room for them to have combatant roles mm -hmm. so so how do you view this decision in terms of uh, you know uh, paving way for for the more compliance of ihl in terms of keep you know preventing gender based violence well i think that will that will bring about a, a lot of material change on the ground you know because uh, here ihl you know seeks to provide protection to the non combatants and to the civilians and once you are a combatant you know you come within that zone you know that the, it's a combatants who fight the war you know in that case you know you you can't uh, claim uh, let, you know kind of a leniency because you are a woman combatant because you are a combatant combatant has no gender Combatant has no gender. That's it. So you can't uh, claim that. But other is true. Once you fall to the ground, once you are physically wounded, once you are sick, once you are unable to fight your adversary, in that case, every everything else will apply. If the same combatant is, uh, you know, subjected to the to the brutality, you know, or sexual crime, of course, there could be there could be punishment. Like we have the large number of examples of child soldiers. Sri Lankan theatre again the same thing, or like. you know in nepal most uh, uh, the entire 10 years when nepal was burning they say child lot of child soldiers were and here the the whole thing is it could be done by both the sides governmental troops could do it and rebel groups also rebel rebel commanders also do it you know so in that case you come within that ambit you know so i don't think it will make any material change you know uh, because then you 
willing to, like, like they say once you voluntarily accept the risk you know then you cannot complain about that you, know? you can't take advantage you know of uh, the 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 charity this uh, because the approach with the ihl has so far followed is a charity based approach you know women and children they need a uh, special protection but once the same woman turns out to be in you know, carries the arms openly wears a uniform and wants to be you know as a, as a combatant you know like she she is she is flying a, a fighter bomber flight you know flying a fighter bomber you know and the fighter bomber is is, is you know uh, you know you know uh, simply uh, you know shot down for instance you know she could lose you know she could uh, or she might bail out you know but subsequent anybody who is there whether it's a male or female cannot be subjected to any kind of torture everything then rest of the once you are non combatant once you 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 fell to the ground the entire protective you know arm of the ihl will be applicable not before that a combatant you know will fight a combatant ha huh. even in that case if you cross the limits lines and limits of the ihl of course you could be held responsible all those excesses which you try to commit you know. in that case i think the law will be gender neutral you know even if the woman commits the same crime woman could be responsible for perpetrator per, 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 those things you know could be same thing you know, you know that, that 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 the law law has to uh, play uh, that neutral. so gradually i'm sure you know the law will also witness those uh, those uh, changes okay. okay sir so sir i uh, again on um, behalf of my institute i take this opportunity to extend uh, my uh, humble gratitude towards you actually sir agreed on just a weeks notice to do this lecture with us and that's actually very kind of him to do so so sir indeed i'm sure um, it actually while listening to the whole uh, lecture it felt like a nostalgic flashback like sitting in one of the um, uh, lectures of course work at cils indeed and i'm sure the other former jnuits who have joined today would also agree with me so sir i again thank you uh, and thank you so much for doing this for us so yes sir thank you thank you radhika yeah okay sir we look forward to more further engagements in future okay thank you okay bye okay sir, okay. i also thank all the participants thank you so much for uh, giving your giving us okay bye okay thank you